And then you see who's more important. <laughs> Which one are we going to talk to? And uh, that's, that's the title of my message this morning. Whose call will you take? And we're going to be looking in, in Jeremiah 35. Now, you'll pardon me if I'm mispronouncing their name. In heaven, I'll find out, I guess. I call them the Rechabites. It might be the Rechabites. In Hebrew, I'm sure it sounds completely different, but uh, you, you, you'll know who I'm talking about. And what we're looking at this morning is who influences you? Who do you listen to? Who has priority? You know, when two different people speak, or when two different philosophies uh, conflict, which way do you go? And uh, let me say, the Lord is very patient. This message was over 200 years in development. Now, sometimes I take a long time on a message, but not that long. Um, Jeremiah chapter 35. Let me read, starting verse 1. I'm going to read down about half of the, of the chapter. Jeremiah 35, verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jeazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, uh, which was above the chamber of Maasiah, the son of Shalem, the keeper of the door. They want you to know very specifically what's going on here. <laughs> Verse 5, And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab the son of Rechab, our father commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed. But we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed, and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon came up into the land that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians, so uh, we dwell at Jerusalem. So let me just stop reading there. Uh, Judah is the main group he's talking to here. Uh, this is at a time in Israel's history when they're divided into two nations, Israel and, and Judah. Judah was away from God, but not this family. Uh, they were still uh, following the Lord. And you know, as, as we look at this this morning, uh, let me just give you a footnote here. God always has a witness. You know, we, we look around at our, our world and we think, oh, what a wicked world we live in. But you know, God always has a witness. And a, as the world gets darker, the witness for the Lord shines brighter. Let me encourage you, be part of that witness. Don't be one who walks away or, or is not standing for the Lord. Uh, these were people who, when others ha had abandoned the Lord, uh, they were still following the Lord. Uh, Jonadab was the one who had given them the, these commandments many, many years before. Now, I, I don't understand how all this, this works, but I, I believe it. Uh, Jonadab had told them total abstinence, no wine. In fact, they, they weren't even going to have vineyards because they weren't going to have lands. Uh, no fixed address, no crops or lands. And, and you might think, what a strange thing. And yet, the Bible says that God was in that. God was in that, preparing a message for Judah 200 years later. God was doing something. And it, it benefited their family. Number one, it kept them from drunkenness. Let me tell you, if you never drink wine, you'll never get drunk. <laughs> if you never buy it, you'll never get drunk. I have a solution, you know, for people with alcoholism. Quit buying it. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Uh, it also kept them from idolatry. You know, because they were able to move and didn't live in the cities, they weren't influenced by the same things. Uh, you know what it's like with culture and so on, all the pressures that, that are there. 
They were also safe from invaders. Israel kept getting, getting invaded by Assyria and Babylon and so on. Uh, so they kept away from wine. They were out of the city. Uh, they were free from really the covetousness. You know, they weren't around everybody having to have this and everybody having to have that. And they just lived, you know, when you carry everything with you, you're not going to get a whole lot of excess baggage. And here comes Jeremiah, and the Bible tells us this was a command from the Lord, verse 2, go unto the house of the Rechabites and tell them, drink wine. So God puts this, we were learning in, in our Sunday school class, uh, this is a test, because God doesn't tempt us to do evil. This is a test, and it's a test from God. You know, they, I'm sure they probably felt the normal desire to be polite. Have you ever had that happen? where someone is very nicely asking you to do something wrong. <laughs> yeah, I've had people bring alcohol to my home. and You know, we don't allow alcohol in our home. And we say, oh, that's really nice that you brought that. Listen, we, we won't accept that. Would you just leave that in your car? <laughs> and, you know, that's hard. You have just this normal desire to be polite, no matter what people are asking you. And I'm sure they, they felt that. But you notice, in the Scripture at least, there's no hesitation. They just say, we don't drink wine. <laughs> Uh, you know, they, they didn't have to, even have to think about it. Uh, they did not compromise what they thought was right. Can I just give you just a, something that will help you in your life here? It's more important to be right than to be polite. Now, as Christians, we don't need to be mean. We don't need to be hard about it or anything. You know, sometimes in life, we just need to realize it's more important to be right than to be polite. This doesn't stand up to this, this test in that sense, but there was one time when we were traveling in the States. And let me tell you, when you travel in America, people try to feed you all the time. And if you want, you can come back as big as a barn, you know, but um, I just decided, I made a decision before we went, I was not going to eat to be polite. You know, that helped me a lot. Because a lot of times you eat just to be polite. Oh, you know, we've prepared this for you. You know, and you feel bad because they prepared it for you. I just said uh, I wasn't going wasn't gonna to go that route. And it helped me. I'm a, I'm a fat man in a skinny man's body. You know, I, I love to eat. And, uh, you know, I just I can't give way to it. Um, but anyway, that's, that's not, you know, the same kind of, of situation. But we need to be careful that we're not just doing things to be polite. Be polite to God first. You know, consider Him, him first. And, but the main point is this. Because of... They're following Jonadab's edicts. God was able to use them as an illustration. God was able to use them as, a, as an example to Judah. And God was also able to reward them. If you look at the end of the chapter, verses 18 and 19, Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you've obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts and done according unto all that he hath commanded you, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me forever. God bless them because of their stand, because of their consistency. And you know, this same thing will be true for us today. Um, you know, there's, there's folks who will pressure us to do this or to do that. But you know, when people need help, they don't look for someone who has the same problems they do. They look for someone who's risen above the problems that are afflicting our world. And, and they might mock you at times, but when they get desperate, you're the person they'll come to if you'll maintain a consistent testimony. If you won't compromise uh, your belief in the Lord and, and what He calls us to do. Uh, when folks are desperate, they want someone different than themselves. Drowning person doesn't look to another drowning person. They look to someone who's, who's on the shore. And, and as Christians, we need to be careful that we, we take this example. Now, God makes a direct application here in, in Jeremiah 35. He, he doesn't leave us to wonder what he's trying to get across. Jeremiah 35, verse, verse 12. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, this is God's response now. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instructions to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons 
not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearkened not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you, to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people hath not hearkened unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring up upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard. And I have called unto them, but they have not answered. And this is God's message to Judah and to Israel. Uh, this is a lesson about listening to God. And he, he spent a, a great amount of time, and he's really uh, taking great care that they would hear this message uh, through these people, listening to God. Uh, the Rechabites had listened to Jonadab, he said, but you won't listen to me. Isn't it amazing who we will listen to? In verses, verse 14 there, he uh, he says that they've performed what Jonadab said, but ye hearken not unto me. He said, I sent my prophets, but you wouldn't listen. In verses 16 and 17, what God is showing us here, what he showed us through the Rechabites is that obedience is possible. <laughs> yeah, you look at our world and you think, oh man, it's, it's hard to live for the Lord. But listen, it is possible. That yeah, might mean uh, being a little different than everyone else. In fact, it will. But for Israel, you know, God had spoken, but they'd not heard. You've experienced that from both ends. You've had people say things to you, and you heard, you know, you heard words, but you weren't listening. My wife, I do that to my wife all the time. You know? not, not what she says, but I'll be listening to the news, and it's just, she'll say, what was that story about? I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> and if you're going to not listen to something... Don't listen to the news. You, you, won't, you won't lose. Uh, but you know, God speaks. It's not that we don't hear the words. We're just not listening. You experience this with children. You tell them something. Kids, did you hear me? Well, of course they heard you. They're just not listening. That's what God is saying to Israel. Uh, he spoke, but they've not heard. That's why the Bible says we need ears to hear. Yeah, he's not just talking about the physical things. He's talking about being willing to take it in and to respond to it. God called, but they've not answered. Have you ever spoken to someone and had them totally ignore you? Well, I have. I've had them look me right in the face. You know, I'm talking to them, and, and they just turn around and walk away. You know, wow, what's going on there? Uh, and, and that's how many times people treat God. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. People look at it and walk away and say, isn't evolution wonderful? <laughs> yeah, God's word speaks. I hear people all the time quoting things from the Bible. Ungodly people using it for their own ends. But they don't hear what God is saying. It's amazing. And he comes to verse 17, therefore. And you see the therefores in the Bible. See what they're there for. It means there's, there's a result. Because they won't listen. Because they won't hear. God says that the evil that he's pronounced on, the judgment that is going to fall. Now, we can see this lesson. We can see what God did with John and Dab and the Rechabites and Judah and all that. But the important thing for us to do now is to apply it to ourselves. Obedience is possible. God does speak. You know, our God is a communicator. I don't know if this applies. I think it does. In your body, you have DNA. God has communicated who you are. How tall you'll be. What color your eyes will be. Everything. It's all there. And he's constantly maintaining it. It's information that God has given. Well, God is able to communicate to your person as well. And he wrote it down so there'd be no mistake. He's given us his word. God has, has spoken. Now it's time for us to listen. The problem is many times we're listening to something else. You know? That, that's, why we don't, that's why I don't hear the news. I'm, I got things going on in my head. You know, I'm thinking... Uh, that's why you don't hear your wife or your husband, because you're, you know, you're doing something else. 
look with me in Jeremiah chapter 2. I just went back through the book of Jeremiah and looked at all the different, well, some of the different ways that God says we don't listen. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. We'll get us started. You know, there's a lot of false sources. Instead of listening to God, everybody's listening to something or someone. But many times we're not listening to God. Everybody listens to someone. Jeremiah 2, verse 13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. That's the first. And secondly, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. A cistern is a, is a water tank. He says, you've refused to come to the living water, the Lord God, and you've made this water tank that's useless over here. Two great evils. We won't listen to God, and we go to other sources. If you go back through the book of Jeremiah, for instance, Jeremiah chapter 5, uh, verse 30, it gives us one source that people were listening to. I love how God puts these words together. Uh, Jeremiah 5, verse 30, A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? He says they're listening to false prophets. Now, you can apply that specifically. There's, there's still false prophets today. People who tell you, oh, this is what God has said. This is what the truth is. And, and it's just wrong. But you can apply it as well. I think, uh, I think we live in a day where we like to hear from experts. Oh, he knows. You know. Oh, he's a doctor. He's a psychiatrist. He's a scientist. He's a, you know, whatever. Um, and, and we need to be careful. God is, is the source of truth. God is the truth. Jesus is the way. God's word is, is true. And we need to be careful that we're not listening to someone other than the Lord. Uh, look at Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2. I've got several of these. and uh, Bear with me as we look at these. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Here's another source people go to. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. You know what the signs of heaven are? It's astrology, horoscopes, uh, superstition, and spiritism. It's amazing. You know, in a world of science, so-called today, it's amazing how superstitions and spiritism has had a, a real uh, breakthrough. Uh, people, people have a spirit and a soul, and they, they want something to do with it. If they say there's no God, they feed it from a false source. They go to a water tank that holds nothing and try to satisfy their thirst. Uh, we need to be careful we're not listening uh, to these false uh, teachings. Jeremiah chapter 17 uh, verses 5 and 6. One of the things I enjoy doing with my Bible is just looking through verses I've underlined. Boy, Jeremiah is a real gold mine. You know, you look through, you can just bless your soul just looking through just a few verses if you mark your Bible. It's been said if you'll mark your Bible, your Bible will mark you and that's a good thing. Uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 5, he says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and, not, and shall not see when good cometh. I'll just stop reading there. The Bible says there's, there's many times when we trust in man rather than God. I, I would equate this to culture. You know, as you look around in, in the world, there's a lot of different cultures. Isn't it amazing what people do? And don't, you know, sometimes you'll see on the news something that somebody does somewhere, and you think, why in the world? Why did they start doing that? Why do they keep doing that? Throwing tomatoes at each other one place or running around with bulls running down the road. You think, man, they're just nuts. Well, somebody started it, and somebody said, oh, I'll, I'll do that too. People do the dumbest things uh, because everyone else is doing it. Every parent's had to deal with that, haven't they? Dad, everyone else is doing it. And, of course, the classic answer, well, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump off with them? <laughs> we need to be careful that we're not just doing things just because it's done. We need to stop and think, well, what does the Lord think of this? Where is this going to lead? Where, what does God want, to, want me to do? You know, sometimes the best thing you can do is 
doing exactly the opposite of what the world is doing. And it'll give you an opportunity. Now, not all the time. <laughs> Don't do that all the time. Uh, but uh, uh, sometimes we just need to stand for the Lord and so that the world can have a testimony of someone who's, who's doing right. Uh, Jeremiah 18, verse 12. We looked at this a few weeks ago. Um, Jeremiah 18, 12 says, They said, There's no hope. But we will walk after our own devices and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Imagination. Some people live by their imagination. In a sense, they live in an imaginary world. But you know, sometimes we think just because we think a thought, it must be a good one. Well, not necessarily. Uh, we need to be careful that we're not just letting our imagination lead us. Uh, you know, this imagination comes from uh, what God describes in Jeremiah 17, 9, a heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Is that really the recommendation you want for the, the guidance that you're getting from something that's desperately wicked and, and deceitful? In Jeremiah 23, verse 35, uh, really all of these have to do with this. Uh, he talks about listening to self rather than God. Jeremiah 23, verse 35 it's an interesting verse here. He says, Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Let me explain what he's saying there. They're saying, What's God said? Oh, we don't care what God has said. What have we said? They're going to go by the, the, every man's word shall be his burden. And we think just because we say something, just because it's been said, uh, gives it importance. But it doesn't. Self is not the guidance that we need. And you can go on and on. You, you'll find many more in the, in the book of Jeremiah of, of pools that people go to that have no water. Of places that people go to for guidance that have, have no wisdom, have no understanding. And, and all of us are in the world, but the Bible says as Christians we're not to be of the world. We're to have a ministry to the world, not to be uh, molded by the world. You know, there's many empty pools that you can go to for water, but no matter how often you go, no matter how many you go to, you'll only find the living water in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? The world calls, God calls. Which call are you going to take? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. Look there with me if, if you would, if you have your Bibles. Jeremiah 3 verse 21. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. He never married. He wrote the book of Lamentations, you know, a, a book of just lamenting and, and crying. Uh, God gave him a, a difficult ministry. And yet, God blessed him. God used him. In the Jeremiah 3, verse 21, he says, A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Here's God's call. Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. See, God calls, but we've got to hear. In our world today, people can hear the message of salvation. I can guarantee you, you, can, you could go on YouTube and have someone explain to you very clearly the plan of salvation. You could call me on the phone. You could call Brad or Rivo or Neville or, you know, there's, there's plenty of communication. That's not the problem. It's that people don't want to hear. And as Christians, we need to be careful that we don't allow ourselves to fall into to that, uh, that trap. Uh, God calls. You know, he calls to the lost. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You know, the world wants rest. The world wants what God has to offer, but not from God. God says to Israel in, in many places, basically, why will you perish? Why will you perish? And God, God's call goes out. And what a blessing it is to know that, that our God not only cares about us, but He's made a way for us uh, to know Him. 
In Jeremiah 9 and verses 23 and 24, Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 9, 23, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. See, all those things he mentions are what the world delights in, our wealth, our strength. God says, you've missed the boat. Don't go to that well. There's, there's no water there. Come to the well of living water. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the lesson we learn from the Rechabites is that we're all guided by someone or something. And we can choose to be guided by God. We can obey the Lord. Because Judah would not listen to God, they, they suffered his judgment. As we read there in Jeremiah 35, verse 17. And my question to you this morning is, will you listen to God? More than any other day, we have God's Word available to us. I mean, you can have it on your phone. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? You can carry it with you. Uh, someone has said, if we treat God's words like we treat our phone, maybe we'd be a bit better off, you know? Keep checking it. Make sure we have it. Make sure it's charged up. <laughs> uh, we need to be careful that we choose to listen to God. Look with me at another verse, Jeremiah 21, verse 8. Now, this applies to a physical situation. Jeremiah 21, verse 8. But it has to do with their obedience to the Lord. Chapter 21, verse 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, here's God's message through Jeremiah to the people. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. That sounds very much like what we read in Romans in the New Testament, isn't it? But this has to do with a physical situation. God was telling them, if they stay in Jerusalem, and that was their natural tendency, that's what most of them wanted to do. He said, if you stay in Jerusalem, you'll die. I set before you a way of life and a way of death. Jerusalem is the way of death. He says, if you'll surrender to Babylon, you know, that, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? You know, giving in to the enemy. He says, if you'll surrender to Babylon, you'll live. What he's saying is, listen to me. This is of God. You might have a situation where you go to the doctor and he says, now I'm going to have to break your leg here to fix you. You're not breaking my leg. Well, listen, for us to know God's will, we've got to follow God's word. And for Israel, this is not for us here today, but uh, the physical part of it, he's saying there's a way of life, there's a way of death. You choose. For us, it's, it's more than, much more than physical, isn't it? In yeah, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You choose. You can take your wages. Listen, you've earned them. You deserve them. And it's death. It's separation from God for eternity. You can take your wages. Or, he says, you can take the gift. The gift was paid for by Jesus Christ. And it's eternal life. You think, well, who would, who would choose they're not listening. That's why Jesus said you need ears to hear. He calls and, and they won't answer. And, and the question is not so much today, what's Israel going to do? You know, what's gonna, what happened in, in those days? It's us. What are we going to do? When God speaks, are we going to listen? You know, initially, it means are you going to get saved or not? Are you going to believe what God says, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? That the wages of sin is death? that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus? Are you going to believe that? That Christ really lived? That He was a real person who, who died for your sins and rose again and is in heaven now interceding for us? Are you going to believe Him? Are you going to be saved or not? And then as, as Christians, you know, when God speaks, we're learning our lesson in Sunday school this morning, you know, about how God allows uh, tests in our life. And He always has a good purpose. Yeah, am I going to believe that? and respond in, in uh, hope and faith and allowing God to make me like Jesus? Or am I going to grump and complain and, and let, it, let it turn into, into sin? Am I going to hear? Am I going to listen? God speaks. Will you hear? God calls. 
will you answer? And his call to the law says, come unto me, all ye that labor. Come unto me. Let me give you rest. You know, God makes a promise that if you'll call on him, he'll respond. Did you know that? There's a couple, probably many. One is in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It's a verse I often think about, one of my favorite verses. Call unto me, God is saying, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I've heard more than one testimony, secondhand, of a person who was in a total heathen situation, no churches, no Bibles, and they just looked up and said, if there's a God in heaven, help me to know you. And God has sent a missionary. And they've known the Lord. See, God is not hiding from us. God calls to us. God sent his son for us. God gave us his word. And he's preserved his word so that we, we still have the word today that was given when it was given. God speaks. And God's promise is, if you'll call on him, he'll answer. In the New Testament, it's Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have God's promise. He'll, he'll not deny you. And I would encourage you this morning, if, if you're not saved, listen, today is the day of salvation. I remember when I was, I was a young man, this was a new song. Uh, the words were, Someday you'll hear God's final call to you to take His offer of salvation true. This could be it, my friend, if you but knew. God's final call. If you reject God's final call of grace, you'll have no chance your footsteps to retrace. All hope will then be gone, and doom you'll face. Oh, hear his call. God's final call. And we don't know when that might be. But we have God's promise. If we'll hear, if we'll listen, if we'll call upon him, he promises he'll answer. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a, what a wonderful God we have. Made our universe everything depending upon him, and he'll hear your cry, whoever and wherever you are. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. With our heads bowed in, in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe you're not sure about eternity. If you died, you don't know if you'd go to heaven or hell or, or what would happen. Well, God says these are written that you may know that you have eternal life. God's given us his word so that we can know. That's what our faith is in. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word, the Word of God. I would encourage you this morning, if you're not, if you're not sure about salvation, make sure today, as best you can. Uh, let us help you and show you from God's Word uh, what God's Word says. And maybe you're saved, but uh, you're not listening to what God has for you. You're not obeying what He has. Uh, today, make that right with Him. Father, we're so grateful that you love us. Lord, thank you for this example and this family many, many years ago who just listened and did what they were told. Father, help us to listen to you. Now, Lord, we know that you've said that we can. We can hear. And Lord, we can obey. Father, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would, uh, would move in their heart, that they might be convicted of their sin and respond by repentance and, and faith. Lord, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing page 154. It's the song, Calling Today. Calling today.